So hi, everyone. Thank you guys so much for uh, tuning in. Today, me and Allison have some great ways, practical ways of uh, communicating with you on making sure that we are in the mode of surrendering and getting out of fear and having being on the side of courage and moving forward um, because it is all unknown and but we should enjoy our lives. So for those of you just finding us, my name is Jean Collins and I do health and wellness and chemical free living. And I have chosen Young Living Essential Oils because they have their amazing farms and it's helped me. It's helped me hugely. I would not be who I am today without uh, these awesome oils because I used to be sick all the time. And you can find out more info on that either by contacting me or checking out my YouTube page. I'm Dr. Allison Johnson. I'm, I'm really into youth and vitality and staying younger longer and more vital longer. So, you know, what does that look like? It means, you know, just embracing life on every level in the physical, in the emotional, in the spiritual, in the mental. And um, I'm here to help you with all of that. You can find me on Immortal Beauty on Facebook and on YouTube. And um, I'd love to interact with you and talk with you about these things that are a great passion of mine. And so today, one of them is a great passion of mine is talking about the emotional states and how we can have more happiness in our life and more joy and just cultivate that like a garden more and more and pull out the weeds of these kind of toxic emotions and these bad habits we have around these kinds of things. So I'd love to hear, Jean, what are you experiencing lately or seeing with people around you that you feel that they need some assistance with or that we need some assistance with? I've heard a lot of people talking about how their emotions are just either kind of chaotic or all over the place and um, they're having trouble like sleeping or really finding like a, a sense of calm and like peace. Um, and maybe it's maybe it is a form of anxiety people are having anxiety I mean it's hard like it's not we're not used to having a, something covering our face so that adds another level to it they're they're in struggle you know they still have grief going on there you know and it's it's um it's it's it is hard and that's why I'm so happy to have oils and also an awareness I would also say my mindset is really strong and I do really great with gratitude as well and focusing on that gratitude of even if it's the smallest thing, it helps. And then you think of bigger things or um, really I love my, I'm so happy and grateful now and I put things into present tense that maybe I don't even have yet, but I know like that's where I wanna go. When we're driving, we're looking ahead, we're looking forward. We're not looking at the ground. There's no window in the floorboard. We know where we're at, right? We understand where we're at, but we have to look forward and move forward. And then like, you got your little rear view mirror to every once in a while, just glance in the back if you need, like, or when you're backing up or something. But that rear view mirror is small because there's not really much you can change. You only near, need those mirrors when you are backing up, which you shouldn't do that often right mm -hmm. I love all those uh all those images and feelings that you're expressing and um I'm trying to you know as a clinician trying to listen to what you're saying about how you're how you're feeling or you're feeling other people and it's like what I'm coming down to is we've got words like overwhelm which we've done a video on or anxiety um that kind of feeling insomnia but also you mentioned grief and so it's like like you're saying, like people's emotions are all over the board right now, right? So it's just like, to me, the feeling is like they're all just amped up from where they normally would be. And maybe there's more of them. So if someone is tending, tends to some anxiety, that anxiety is going to be really strong, but maybe their fear is also really strong and there's also some grief and whatever. Um, so I think both you and I have this as part of what we've kind of internalized from things we've learned is that fear is the root of basically all of the emotions. So yeah. that idea of fear or faith or fear or love, which in my teachings that I have learned is more about like wanting everything to thrive, embracing your life, moving forward. Whereas fear is a contraction and a stop. Mm -hmm. And so the major 
uh, thing is like, to me, that gratitude piece that you speak of is so important because it really opens your heart and it helps you embrace life as it is. Because gratitude doesn't have an opinion about I like this, I don't like this. It's like you're taking the like or dislike and then you're pivoting and you're saying, and, and ideally we tend to do it with a dislike because we're like, I don't like this. Okay, gonna pivot, be grateful for it. It's like if we can practice that gratitude with the things that we do like and practice that muscle almost. So it's like everything that we you know, find pleasure in or like or enjoy, if we can actually amp up the enjoyment of that and the gratitude of that and the celebration of that. So say it's like, I'm today, I woke up and say, I didn't have as much body pain as I usually do. Then instead of going, well, but I still have body pain and go into that. It's like, wow, I have less than I usually do. This is amazing. Right. And even doing something like pom poms or like fake pom poms and be like, yes, this is amazing. And so in your chemistry in your words and your movements, you're showing a part of yourself like, I am excited and grateful for this. Thank you. So you start those chemicals going, and you're also orienting yourself to look for more of that instead of looking for more of why I have more pain, why I'm fearful, why I'm grieved, all this kind of stuff. So really, it just keeps pointing to, it starts here to move in the direction you want to move in, like you're saying. So that big window in front that, you know, um, we call it like a windshield is big and expansive. And it's like, we're looking forward and kind of to the sides. Then we have a sense of ourself in the car as like here, you know, here now, or it's kind of in between. And then the rear view is like the past. And really all we can do is change our orientation to the past. It, if it shows up and most of the time it's better to kind of just get out of the way. So it's almost like if someone was coming up behind you really fast, right, on the highway or something, it's better just to let them pass. So if your past is like coming up and like, ah, you should be getting upset about this, ah, and you're just like, I'm just going to go ahead and move over, <laughs> let you go by. So uh, I think that that's a helpful technique. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So like I'm, I'm thinking of like that um, react versus respond. Like, uh, I, I loved that idea of like taking that, the car a little bit further um, too, but like when we r react, we're having more of that chaotic and we're feeding more of that, those emotions that we don't want. But when we like kind of like either pull over and we think about it or we just let that, the past, past you know, go by, then we have that time to really respond and to really know Sometimes that's what I do, like, I'm bringing it also into, like, social media or emails or texts, like, because those things can get so misconstrued, because I've totally read something and been all like, oh, God, you know, and then I go back and I, like, kind of late, and then I read it again, I was like, that's totally different now. I missed something when I first read it, you know, and so I think that's also another cool thing with, like, when you respond it shows that you're you're utilizing more of a, your higher faculties but so what happened is uh yesterday nate and i got stuck uh like in the middle of the forest a flat tire it you know it was going flat it wasn't completely flat so we we're like we had to leave like we knew that we had to take action because sitting there thinking about different ideas or thinking about like things uh, it's not going to help like and i had also fallen the day before so my shoulder was hurt so i wanted to put on oils but i was like nope we got we got time is sensitive we have to to move forward and just get to where we need to go to get back home safely or as safe as possible uh, which it was safely, obviously. Um, we're good. The bike is still together and everything. But like, we really didn't know the how. Like, we kind of knew, but we didn't know, like, someone ended up helping us. We had no idea if we were going to get help or not. But we took that action anyways. Um, and they, they helped us quite a bit. Um, the tire held up really well. We had no idea. Like, we didn't, like, but we just had to take that action. It's like, 
even today, like I can tell you everything that's happened already happened, like from me waking up, but I really, I have an, I have a plan in a way. I have appointments that are going to happen in the future, but I don't necessarily know exactly how they're going to go because they haven't happened yet. But I'm going to put on and have that idea of it's all working out. Everything is going well. I mean, that's what I did when we were stuck in, <laughs> because it felt so weird riding on a motorcycle in a flat tire. And I was like, okay, this is like, but I'm like, and I did, I did have those fearful thoughts come in of us sliding across or, and I'm like, nope, no, we're going to stay on the bike. We're getting home safely. Like this is happening. And we did. Just a very interesting idea of like, why not? Why not think of something in the positive? Why not put that gratitude out there? And like, why not? We do it all the time negatively. We talk about our dramas, what this happened. And then, and then we wonder why we still are getting more of that. Um, like I'm aware of everything that's going on not everything, but a good bit. I understand what's happening. I like to a certain extent, but I also am not going to go to that side of fear of the world is coming to an end or what, whatever, or my freedoms are take, getting taken away. I'm going to look at it like, how do I want to be living my life? And then I put it in that direction because that's what we have because we don't know. We don't know until it happens. And there's all these predictions and there's all these things. There's some things that are happening where some things are finally getting called out that you're just like, wow, this is weird. This is cool. But it's like when things are coming to light, sometimes it's hard to swallow that, right? It's hard to, when you've heard something, maybe a lie, and then you finally hear the truth or you recognize your ownership in a situation you're like sometimes like oh damn so take a second like think about what you're doing <laughs> put on some oils <laughs> respond uh instead of react you know and sometimes also try and see it from that person's perspective or ask more questions like if you don't if maybe Maybe you've thought of it in the negative aspect of it. Ask a question about it. Be like, why are you thinking that way? Or like, what, well, where did that come from? Like, I mean, in a way, like when I'm being on that motorcycle, I had no idea. I'm like, I, I didn't want those thoughts, but they still kept, crept in a little bit. And I was like, no, you need to leave. This is, we're going to be fine. <laughs> we're making it. Thank you so much for sharing that story. And it's a great, um, experience to have when especially when we really get in that fear and there's something about fear that's kind of a response of our instinctual sense that's like this could be dangerous or i need to be on high alert and that is okay but then there's the acceleration of that and the feeding of that that all those thoughts start to accumulate and then there are stories around that. So like the, all the possible scenarios that could happen and all of this kind of stuff. So one way to explain it is like, if you were to touch a hot stove, you will, your body will remove the hand very quickly because it doesn't want to get burned. Oh, no. Or if you're on the, on the edge of a cliff or something and you start to step off of it by accident, your body will immediately step back. And so that's the, the function of that instinctual sense but it has nothing to do with the stories that we tell about that fear it's like that and it just helps you it, it wants you to survive so when people say well fear helps me not necessarily but fear will fear will most of the time hurt you and then fear will often lead to all of the other emotions and the root of that fear is often fear of the unknown and so this is what you were pointing to too. It's like, we, we, honestly, we don't ever know as much as we engage our intellects, we pose scenarios, we take the past experiences and try to make them into future experiences. We never truly know what is going to happen. Like you're saying, even something seemingly as mundane as I have some meetings later today 
you don't know exactly how those are going to go. You have a general, maybe you have a plan or you kind of know that person. So you kind of know what to expect or something, but you never really know. So if we actually take some refuge in that unknown and go, I don't know. Right. So there's a Zen um, mantra, which is clear mind. Don't know. And so with the inhale, clear mind, exhale, don't know. And it's not like clear mind, damn it, I don't know. It's a clear mind, I don't know. And there's like a liberation to that not knowing because we spend a lot of our energy and time ruminating and creating stories and creating scenarios that never happen. So why not spend that energy, like you're saying, not having a negative instinctual bias, which you'll hear that humans have, like, we fear the worst, we're ruminating, we're fearing, we're worrying, we're getting anxious. Instead, to use that energy that we would otherwise use on that, to use on something positive in the direction we want to go. And of course, that voice will come up in your head that says, well, you don't want to be a fool, or don't be so optimistic, you don't want to be a Pollyanna. And it's like, if you just understand very logically that you're thoughts and energy and intention um, are valuable commodity and what you choose to spend that on is up to you and it's why not spend it on that positive outcome why not spend it on those positive images in your head those positive mantras those positive movements in the direction you want to go because otherwise it's going to get spent in this other way and then what's the end of that you know, part of us will say, well, if I don't, if I don't think of all the negative scenarios and focus on the negative, then something bad's going to happen. And then when something bad ever happens in your life, then that part of you goes, oh, check, a good thing I spent all that time getting all worried about it. You don't know if because you spent all this time worrying and getting fearful about it, that that's why something happened in the end. Like ultimately, there's so many inputs into our lives. There's so many possibilities what we can take responsibility for is how we approach a situation. And um, what I was reflecting on today was I was kind of ruminating about an email I had sent and, oh man, I should have said it this way or said it that way. And this is how the person responded and like feeling really uncomfortable that that was out there and in that person's sphere. And I was like, oh, I should have said it differently. And now they're thinking this and thinking that. And instead of um, approaching that email and rereading it, like what Jean was saying, like sometimes you reread a post or you reread a comment and you're like, oh, I totally missed that part. What I did was my old behavior of rereading the email, but I approached it more from how could I read this and not feel reactive about it? So how could I read their response to me and feel like, ah, okay, this is what it is. I don't have to like it or not like it. I don't have to feel like the world is ending. I don't have to feel anxious or fearful. And so what I did with that tendency of mine to go over and over something is I tried to actually engage with it in a useful way, which was I'm going to read this and I'm going to feel how I feel in my body and I'm going to do my, I'm going to do my breathing. I'm just going to breathe in, breathe out as I read this. And I'm going to allow whatever feelings to come up to come up. And I'm not going to have a story about those feelings. I'm just going to let them come up and pass through and come up and pass through. And every time I reread this email, actually, the feeling that I was feeling at said paragraph was less and less as I did this. So instead of wrapping myself around a story of like, oh, I shouldn't have done this. Oh, they're upset with me. Oh, I could actually read through it and try to release those feelings because I can't control how they perceive what I wrote. I can't change that I put it out there and I wrote it. But what I can do is I can change the feeling that it's invoking inside of me and it's, it feels all stuck and it feels, you know, ugh. so I want to reach more of that flow and that uh, sense of ease. And I think a lot of it is about surrender. And I think that was something we were going to talk about today is, basically surrendering, surrendering whatever shows up to the unknown and realizing that you can take action in your own life. Yeah, definitely. We were going to talk about surrender and that was one of the oils that I um, had grabbed. Um, 
And what I've been kind of using around when I go out in public and also um, having and giving away samples of uh, Valor for sure. Uh, and then like peace and calming is something that I had to use last night. Uh, but even just lavender, like there's so many good oils. We've talked about Valor before. If you want to hear more about that, go to one of our other videos. Um, but you can just think of Valor as the courage oil. So surrender though, is this idea of really being able to, um, using this essential oil uh, and kind of surrendering to the things that aren't in your control. It's really good for people who um, have control issues, but they also have to recognize. Like, so uh, I'm sure Allison, you've felt this, and, and those of you who've seen this video, I'm sure you're a practitioner or some on some level, you're working or, or trying to help others, but also you recognize that they first have to want to help themselves. Um, uh, it's I liked another way of thinking of it is you can't lose weight for someone else. So uh, surrender is just a really great oil that provides the aromas to help cast off inhibitions that may be controlling your life or limiting your potential. So that's another way that you can think of it. Just the act of surrendering is just like, okay, I like, I can't do much. I can only do what I know I can do. You can respond in a in a positive manner. So it has lavender, lemon, black spruce, Roman chamomile, angelica, mountain savory. Like we were talking about earlier, that fear of the unknown. We don't really know. We only know what we what we know. Like we only know what we're thinking. You really don't know what anyone else is thinking. You thinking. You don't know if they're having some some demons or some thoughts that they have to work on you have no idea because you're not in their in their footsteps you're not in their mind so that's why i usually also thinking more positive or asking questions and when i talk with people i do my best to to do not judge it still sometimes happens but you know i really want to hear what they have to say so that i can understand it better so then i really know how to respond so i just ask more questions if i don't get what they mean just ask more questions so a lot of people right now are also arguing and whatnot um dale carnegie said the best way to win an argument is not to get into one <laughs> you, just don't, you just don't do it it's also this other idea of like touching lightly on something you know um having that strength and that willpower to to just help think a little differently help people think a little differently but um surrender just surrender your emotions you can use it every day right now if that's really going to help you and uh, know that you're in a controlling mindset then use your surrender and um sometimes control is uh basically anytime we're not flowing with the unknown we have a sense of we need to control something right so that um some people show up with that need for control stronger than others in, in general it's like more their tendency but if we think of any time we're basically not in that flow of what is we're in some sense trying to control something and control that tightening right got to have control and also feeling out of control are kind of two sides of the same coin so both of those require some surrender in some sense um, and one other thing I wanted to share was something that I use both internally for my own thoughts and processes, but also externally to others is when people want to get real tight around an opinion or I have some preconception or some story about how someone is being or how they're acting or what they're thinking. Like Jean said, you don't ever know. You never know. So kind of having some mantra with that is that's one possibility. And so when that shows up, you can just be like, okay, well, that's one possibility. And then your mind creates some other story. Then you're like, mm -hmm, that's one possibility. And so the same way that you can do that on the external, if people want to fight with you about things or 
or say that their opinion is the only opinion. Just, that's one possibility. They're not necessarily going to like you saying that, and you don't have to say it in a snarky or sarcastic way. But really, that's the truth of it. It is one possibility. There is no one right answer for any particular situation. Um, so for uh, Chinese medicine wise for fear, which is I'm going to focus on that because it is the root of all the other emotion, negative emotional states, is this contracted what we call water energy. So if you think of a, you know, water that's being um, dammed up is a certain kind of way of seeing it or water that's sitting stagnant like in a swamp. So these kind of pathological conditions of water can create a different kind of feeling inside of us. Um, Chinese medicine is based on human and nature are interconnected and so we mirror each other and we have those same elements and seasons and movements that you see outside in nature, we have those inside as well. So like our own kind of internal weather and conditions and environments. And so if we're really stuck in that water phase, it's like the winter phase, it's like a contraction phase. So if you think about winter in any most climates, you know, things look fairly dead on the surface, you know, the trees have lost their leaves, there's a kind of quietude, not as much sunshine, um, sometimes snow, and it's just kind of, it's real quiet on the outside and like inside, you know, down under the soil, maybe the seeds are starting to sprout and, or, you know, get ready to sprout in the spring and that, but everything's pretty quiet and contracted. And so when that energy is, that's natural that way, but when that energy gets too contracted, then that shows up as that fear response where it can't open up. It's just like a tight fist and it can't open up to the flow, movement and growth of life. And so this book that I have um, that I bought years ago, it has a lot of a Chinese medicine terminology in it, um, five element terminology. It's called Aromatherapy for Healing the Spirit by Gabriel Moje. And um, she recommends for that contracted fear energy um, oils like cedarwood, geranium, ginger, juniper, thyme, and also caraway, cypress, jasmine, sandalwood, and vetiver. So two of my favorites out of that are sandalwood and vetiver. And these are the young living oils and they're just so high quality. I have the Royal Hawaiian sandalwood and then the vetiver. Um, sandalwood is made from the heartwood of the sandalwood tree. It takes a really long time to extract uh, because it has to grow to a certain age before you can extract it. It's very precious. Um, and vetiver comes from the roots of a certain plant. And it's very um, earthy and a little bit spicy. And just, they're both so grounding and soothing. And when, you know, you're feeling that fear piece, it's like to have that grounding and soothing energy can help you kind of release that, that tightened fist, can help you just start to open up to what is right now and, and um, relax around that. Because life is happening aside from you. It's not like I show up and then suddenly life is happening. The flow of life is happening. You go to sleep at night, you wake up. It's not like the world goes, oh, she's up, I'm here. It's like, it's always happening. So when I open up to the flow of what's actually happening that I have no control over, more you can open up to that and then decide kind of you're on that river. Okay, where do I want to move my ship? You know, that's then that's the direction that you are consciously choosing to take in that way. But if you if you're like a clam that's tight shut, and you can't let anything in there, you know, it's just like or an ostrich with their head in the sand, that's that fear mode everything's tight, everything's shut down. And so if you can start to, to kind of soothe and open that up, which these oils do very well, vetiver and sandalwood, um, you can start to, to, to let that life force th flow through you and um, start to move forward. And I like that idea. Um, when you are in a moment of tightness and you, you should definitely, make sure that you are finding ways to recenter and re know like what is the nucleus what is at your core like where are you really truly desiring to go um and how are you going to like move in that direction the best way also to to get out of any of these emotions is physically moving when 
you're depressed or whatever, you know, get up and move, get up and brush your teeth, take a shower, walk, walking is huge. And then like grounding in general. So there's this idea of like walking barefoot on the ground also helps you to ground in as well. So that's another idea. Like you don't even have to use oils, just go and maybe a grassy area. We, where I live, it's really rocky. So I've totally done it. I haven't, like, I'm not saying I go on like 20 mile walks or like 10 mile walks or even a mile, like, but just kind of like around my house, maybe to the front entrance or like 10 steps out and 10 steps back. And not, you know, the grass is definitely nicer. Where the other day we were at the river and we were, um, we first had on our water shoes, but then we both kind of me and Nate just like chilled on the riverbank and we we're barefoot and then just started walking around. And so that's another idea of, you know, walking in that, that dirt, that sand or in the water, you know, starting to go into the water. It's really awesome. Yeah. There's actual, of course, benefits to what they call grounding, you know, and they're selling sheets that do that these days and mats and different things. And, um, because humans, you know, a lot of us are on carpeted surfaces or even wood. And so basically concrete or soil or like water um, can help us get those negative ions that help us ground and reduce inflammation in our body. So I'm very ha happy that we have some concrete floors at our house. So I get some of that even just being in the house. And concrete's not the best one for it, but it's a good second to actually being on the dirt. Um, which we can do as well. And I love that idea of, um, of just getting some movement. So it's basically when we get stuck in any state, so like I'm feeling sad or I'm feeling fearful or I'm feeling anxious, we tend to have this kind of freeze response where we're, we're physically stuck there and we're going over it and over it and over it and over it. So even just if you could just manage to roll out of bed if you're in bed or if you're sitting down, stand up, or if you're standing up, move your arms around, do a jumping jack, do something. It, you, moving the body is gonna help the, something deep inside of you understand that something else has to move too. And that can be the thoughts and the emotions. So if you can start on the level of body and just do something even very simple to change, basically you're trying to change states because this state is not working very well and is potentially hurting you. So how can I move, move out of this? And so for me, like if I can't get outside or it's too hot to get outside or something like that, and I'm inside, then maybe I want to do something like, oh, I don't want to do exercise. I don't feel like doing yoga. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then I get stuck in that. Okay. I'm going to vacuum the couches. I'm going to sweep the floor. I'm going to clean the toilet. Like you just do some, wash the dishes, just do some small tasks where you're actually doing something physical and actually that will, because you're then focused on that task, um, as many times as you've done it, you still have to pay some attention to wiping down the counter or sweeping the floor. You actually start to divert the attention to something else. And therefore you're starting to change your state. That also reminds me of just the act of smiling, like, like set a timer on your phone, every hour smile and that'll help change your mindset and um, just focus your energy. So that was one other thing that I thought of is that act of like smiling, you know, gratitude, just moving. Thank you so much, Jean. And I had had the thought of the smiling and then I forgot and I'm so happy you brought it back. Um, even if you don't feel like it, it's a great idea. Set a timer on your phone. And then when you start to have emotions that you realize, oh, I'm heading in the wrong direction, literally just put on that smile even if it's a fake smile but ideally when you start to smile you'll start to feel like your heart open and you start to feel that gratitude piece um, i have a friend who does laughter yoga and she used to have a timer on her phone where she would spend like so many minutes laughing so you can again you can start that also with kind of a fake laugh or you start to be silly one of my favorite um, recommendations from her is to feel like you're jello and you shake around and then you start laughing, you know, feeling like you're like, you're jello. Um, so there's different things. If you look into laughter yoga, you can see that. But basically the idea is that that joy, that great happiness that is inherent to life and it's always there actually. 
And when we feel ourselves going into those toxic emotions, we're actually off track. And so by smiling, by having gratitude, by opening up and being grateful for our life and embracing our life, what a, what a pleasure and miracle it is that we're actually here, you know, then that starts to move us actually into that flow, which is actually much easier and it's always there for us. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this has been useful and you can follow me on Immortal Beauty on uh, YouTube and Facebook. The, the idea of the off track thing made me think of another aspect um, that I've heard a little differently, which might resonate with some people, is there's always two sides of a stick. You know, um, you can also think of it as the problem and the solution. It, they're there at the same time. But if you're focusing so well on the problem, you're not going to see the solution. You're just looking at that problem. But if you focus on and switch over to a solution and looking like, and then it'll click. Or like you said, the, the uh, that other side, that negative side just means you're looking at it wrong. Your perception, your per perspective is a little, um, a little skewed so you gotta figure it back out like it's just i don't know i like the two ends of the stick thing it's just another way of looking at it and sometimes you, you should maybe this stick is too much right now don't even look at that stick there's other sticks in the pile take out another stick and like focus on that positive stick and how awesome it is and how much life is like focusing on the problems uh there's an, uh, another way of thinking it that I've heard of like, we could have six things going great, but we have one problem and then we focus on that problem. But that's not going to get us the solution. Look at the other six things that are going great. And then all of a sudden that, that solution will happen. Einstein, a lot of the great mastermind people, like when they were creating and it was just like getting, they couldn't figure it out. They were like stuck, like we've been talking about in that fear. They moved aside, went and did something else. And then, then the, pro the problem was solved. It, it came to them. They were like, oh, it was there the whole time. Sometimes you just got to step away. So, so yeah, thank you guys so much for, for watching, for tuning in, for commenting, for just, um, I, we hope that this has helped you. We gave you some practical tools that you can just easily do. We also threw out some awesome essential oils that have helped us. And uh, there's, again, there's many more on my YouTube channel. Wednesday, Wellness Wednesday, I'm going to go through uh, for the next three or four Wednesdays, different uh, calming oils. And that way you can really select which ones are going to be best for you and or your family. Um, calming, but also like bringing that, that uh, like joy, joy essential oil, just bringing that joy, bringing that those more positive, the, those emotions that are going to easily get you moving into a better direction. Um, I'll talk about those essential oils. So yeah, and all that info is below and the ways to contact both me and Allison. So thank you guys so much.